Okay, Josh here, uh, another video. Today we're gonna be talking about the exhaust system on the 1991 to 98 Saturn S series, uh, SC2, SW2, SL2, and 9192 SC with the 1.9 liter dual overhead cam. And we're gonna discuss engine headers versus engine manifolds for the exhaust. Um, before I get into the detail of everything, I want to cover how an engine makes power. All right, your internal combustion engine is essentially a giant vacuum pump. It literally sucks in air. The reason it makes power, you have a fuel injector that's spraying a volatile fuel mist that turns into a vapor and hitting it with an electrical spark. This causes an explosion in the cylinder, also generates a lot of heat. All right, the heat energy is what powers the car as heat as something heats up it expands this is especially true with gas which creates pressure inside the cylinder thus moving the crankshaft crankshaft moves the input shaft of the transmission through the flywheel transmission moves the tires and wheels through the differential assembly the car starts going down the road like this truck okay so production of power now the concept of power production does not change whether you have a saturn 1.9 liter a Honda 20 VTEC like my buddy Guy, or the Saturn 1.9 liter in my SC2, and even my old beat up 2.5 liter Iron Duke in my Grand Am that's two valves per cylinder because it's still overhead valve. Now, that's some old tech there. All right, the book I'm referencing on production of power and what I'm going to focus on because the exhaust system is critical for this is from a Chevy small block V8 book. All right, so obviously you're not going to pick this book up to work on your Saturn, but if you want to learn the concepts of heat management and how it affects engine performance and fuel economy, or if you're building a Chevy small block, pick it up. It is written by a man. His name is David Vizard. You can Google search him, by the way. Okay, so at the very beginning, we have the production of power. All right, you have your introduction. The very first section of this manual, heat management. All right. Now, the reason I'm discussing the heat management part of building power out of an engine or fuel economy, whichever way you want to go, is your heat loss sources. Your cooling system, your engine itself radiates heat through the block in the head, obviously. You, you can't do anything about this. The braking system, there's many things that cause heat loss. But if you look, your exhaust system can waste up to 35% of the heat energy generated by your engine. So if you want more power or more fuel economy, it's not going to hurt to look into your exhaust system. So, manifold versus a header, which one's the better choice? Well, we'll start with the manifold. As you can see, we have an 8-digit GM part number. This is the factory exhaust manifold from the 1993 to 1998 Saturn 1.9 liter dual overhead cam engine. As you can see, it's a very simple design, single head pipe, nothing fancy, not too expensive for GM to produce. They are made out of solid cast iron, so they do radiate a little bit less heat into the engine bay. Where they kind of suffer is flow. All right, and I'll get into that when I get into the section on headers. Uh, they're restricted. So they're going to give you decent fuel economy and decent putting around on the street. But when you want to stomp on it, a manifold's actually going to cost you a little bit of power. But it also keeps the engine bay fairly clutter free, very easy to work on. So it's all in what you want for your car. Headers. Okay. Advantages to a header. The very first one is better flow. All right. The second one is the scavenging effect. All right. When you have a naturally aspirated engine, so sorry guys, this ain't going to apply to you who've already went the route of putting a turbo or a supercharger on your car because you already know your exhaust system doesn't scavenge because you got boost. For those of us running natural aspiration though, we have negative manifold pressure, so we're going to have scavenging. All right. Our camshafts are designed 
when the exhaust stroke is near its completion and the piston is almost to the top of the cylinder, the intake valve actually begins opening. The velocity of the exhaust exiting the cylinder creates a vacuum, thus scavenging intake air from the manifold before the intake stroke occurs. The more of this scavenging effect, the more air and fuel that gets pulled into the engine, i.e. more power. This also reduces exhaust flow restrictions, thus improving fuel economy in most cases. Another benefit to a header, depending on how your exhaust is set up, and Saturn knew this, they were ahead of their time with their engineers. Balance. As you can see, I have two flange ports. One is attached to the number one and the number four cylinder. The other one is attached to the number two and number three cylinder. All right. I'm going to walk over to the car for a minute because I'm going to get into the next step because I believe you could do this with a manifold, but you don't need to. So I mentioned balance. All right. Crawl under the car. I left the heat wrap off because I just installed a manifold that's wrapped. And you will see if I can get on the camera angle. There is one bolt that while this is wrapped up, I cannot get to. So I had to take the wrap off and unravel it. I'll put that back and reclip it. But as you can see, I got two pipes coming off my engine into a single pipe. Now the reason for this is your exhaust velocity is going to be different in each of these tubes. The faster flowing tube, when it's traveling in its waves down into the single pipe, creates a small amount of vacuum for the slower moving tube. Just like the scavenging effect on the cylinders, this vacuum allows that to be scavenged out of the exhaust manifold much quicker into the exhaust. Uh, what you're also looking at, and I'm going to go ahead and show you on the top of the manifold here. You're also looking at header wrap. Right? This goes back to the heat management. I said that headers will allow more heat into your engine bay. Obviously, naturally aspirated cars are pulling air from the engine bay. Hotter air means less fuel because it's less dense. All right, this stuff is manufactured by DEI. All right, you can pick it up at Advance, O'Reilly's, AutoZone. One roll will cost you about 50 bucks. The steel clips are going to be recommended on the Saturn S series, and I'm going to cover that in a moment. They're about 15 bucks. So this is about a $60 modification. I don't know what it's going to do for performance, but I know I can drive the car, shut it off, and touch this stuff. That's how well it keeps the heat inside the exhaust where it belongs, thus preventing heat loss through the exhaust system, at least until it gets back to the parts of the car where it's not in the engine bay. All right, now, like I said, underneath I have a bolt covered when that's wrapped. As you can see, I got some bolts here. The reason I recommend the clips when you wrap your headers, you may, may cover bolt holes and thus not be able to get to them to service it if something does fail or you decide to tear the engine apart but you get better heat management with the wraps. So if you go with the header, I do recommend wrapping it even on a street vehicle because it'll still allow a better scavenging effect than an open header that's allowing heat into the engine bay. It'll also protect your electrical components, which are gonna be sensitive to heat, especially your coil packs and your ignition control module. All right, I haven't covered spark system. I haven't covered the DIS spark system used on these cars. There's videos out there that do actually cover it. But I am going to cover some characteristics of it when I get the uh, cylinder head back from the machine shop and I start getting the uh, built engine ready to install in this car. So that's going to be in a future video. Uh, this thing's just got an oil change, got the header on. I'm going to go ahead and rewrap that tape, get it all clipped up, and we'll see how this thing runs. We're going to see how it affects economy. Uh, maybe I'll take it up to the drag strip, see if it has changed any of my ETs. I've been averaging 17, two and a quarter miles, 78 miles an hour. With everything that's done to the car so far, we'll see if this gets me to a 17.1. Who knows? But if you got any questions, uh, comments, or if you have any advice, feel free to drop me a comment. Uh, for those that you, of you that are following my trials and tribulations with this car, 
I do appreciate your continued support. If you're new to this, if you're new to this video and you were just Google searching it because you were interested in knowing the difference, feel free to say hi. Feel free to subscribe. There'll be more videos to come in the future. Thank you and have a great day.